these scientists say that they have such detail of the structure of Henry IV's body, or his head at least, and his neck, that they can come up with a pretty accurate re reconstruction using very modern techniques. Over in France, scientists have reconstructed the voice of King Henry IV using his mummified head. A 3D model of the sovereign skull has been used to create the initial vocal capsule, which gives us an idea of how the monarch would have sounded. Écoutez, everybody. I were told by the uh, the producer today not to listen to that until we came into the studio. Uh, so, so. The dinner party guest from hell, isn't he? I just wonder what he's doing. Well, <laughs> let's not wonder too much. Let's talk to Charles Bremner, Times contributor, who joins us now. Very good afternoon, Charles. Good afternoon. Now, what do you make of this voice? It's 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 quite fun, as you suggest. This is done by Philippe Charlier, who's a very well-known forensic pathologist at the University of Versailles. He's made a speciality out of recreating anatomically dead French uh, pre presidents in some form, one form or another. He's worked with an interdisciplinary team to create the uh, what he they claim is the uh, a reproduction of the phonetic structure of the, of the, of the body of King Henry IV. King Henry IV was the, one of the much loved French kings. He read, uh, he was a f the parallel to Queen Elizabeth of, of England at the end of the 16th century. So this has attracted a lot of interest. And the, the team, the scientific team, thinks that they can now turn to other experts and actually recreate vo uh, voice, speech, and um, even going as far as the king's southwestern accent to have him read out texts that he wrote in his lifetime. Right, OK. Well, look, this is nice work if you can get it, Charles. <laughs> but, but, I mean, in a sense, what's, what's the point? Because also we just don't know whether or not these very clever academic people have got it right. I mean, how, how would you or I ever challenge that? Well, they do admit that there's no way of proving them wrong. But they say that they're much more precise than previous attempts to do this sort of thing. You might remember people, the London University did it with um, an Egyptian mummy and uh, some other academics have done it with the Mona Lisa, although there was no body concerned in that one. They, these scientists say that they have such detail of the structure of Henry IV's body, or his head at least, and his neck, that they can come up with a pretty accurate re reconstruction using very modern techniques and this gives and they've, they've, they've gone as far as blowing air through the through the reproduced head with all the, the vocal cords as they must have been as they claim so they say this is as close as anybody could get to imagining what his, the tone of his voice sounded like right now my ears pricked up at the mona lisa i mean have you had a chance ever to listen to what that recreation of her voice was like no, that was done a few years ago by people just try imagining the structure, sort of de developing from the structure of her, her, her head right. and facial features, what that would have sounded like. OK. Uh, we were having a little bit of fun, Charles, and just imagining who in our minds, just in our imagination, the dead figures of history might sound like in the modern day. So I thought that perhaps Anne Boleyn would sound a little bit like Denise Van Outen. I don't know whether you're familiar with Denise's work. We've had a fantastic suggestion from Mary, who thinks that Boudicca might have sounded like Kathy Burke. Do you have a relevant French person living who you could compare Henry IV's voice to? Well, the obvious one is uh, the politician called François Bayrou, who was the prime minister for briefly uh, last year. He is a big figure in the southwest, Béarn. He's the mayor of Pau, which is the birthplace of Henry IV. And he has this accent of the Pyrenees, which Henry IV had. He's, and François Bayrou likes to see himself as a modern day Henry IV, so he would be the one I think I would. OK. okay. Now, we did hear the voice of King Richard III, the English king, after his face was rebuilt in 2024. Uh, shall we have a, a listen to this and compare the two gentlemen? We're therefore following in the footsteps of our ancestors. I've determined to honour our dearest, fierce-born son, Edward, 
whose outstanding qualities with which he is singularly endued for his age give great. Well, he's got more about him than the French. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're at the beginning of a journey here, aren't we, with Henry the IV? Uh, but Charles, is the idea that actually these academics and technicians and scientists will be able to get to the the kind of speech that the same type of people got to with King Richard? Yes, absolutely. They want to reproduce the accent and everything and have the king read out, for instance, one of his love letters to his mistress at the time. And that, that's, of course, a French French procedure, standard French procedure. But the but what they claim more seriously, much more seriously, is that this all this work will help in the reconstruction of speech for patients who've had uh, cancer treatment and op um, removal of their larynx and uh, other medical treatments like that. So they say this is all very serious and positive. It is not just playing around with history. OK, well, we completely, obviously, applaud that. Are French people excited, though, by being able to hear the possibility of uh, a long-dead king? Well, so far, no, <laughs> just that one or two vowels, not really, no. <laughs> the, the, um, a few Gallic it, shrugs. It was it was replayed with a lot of excitement by, by um, Radio France, the, the equivalent to the BBC, but it did produce quite a lot of shrugs because uh, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't impress a lot. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much indeed for bringing us this story today. That's Charles Bremner.